anymore. Like, no deck in the game outside of, like, Face Hunter really punished you for right. skipping turn two. Um, and Mage is still a deck that wants to skip turn two most of the time with Encounters Flow, so very little has changed. Uh, but now skipping turn four can be a lot more punishing um, with how you have to play it out. But it's still a very, very powerful card. And even if we want to be results-oriented and look at the series before, I think of the games where Yala played Deck of Lunacy against RDU. He went 1-1, one, one, right? So still no <laughs> yep. real conclusion to be drawn from that point. And then the third game was just a blowout where you know it didn't really matter whether he drew Lunacy or not. He wasn't really going to get out of that situation. So this time we're going to see a different dynamic with both players cooking. And now, Raven, I don't want to speak too soon, and I very nearly did because Boston rips it off the top. What am I thinking? Yeah, good. You didn't speak too soon. Encanter's flow there for Boston. And the choice now from Psycho, whether he goes for that coin deck of lunacy again. We had this conversation almost exactly in the previous matchup with Yala versus RDU. Yep. And we'll see if Psycho's of the same thought pattern, right? He does have Coin Lunacy with that refreshing spring water, which is what would make me say it's an almost guaranteed play. I don't yes. really see what can be better. Agreed. It's, yeah, it's almost exactly the same spot as Yala was in, right? Very minimal pressure on the other side from Boston. Seven mana cards all still in the deck. It's the prime Lunacy position, I would say. And Bosden has not had that minion opening. Of course, he had his Encanter's Flow, but no real minions to play out. Nothing to overly punish this deck of Lunacy, apart from just having a few more card draw and then having this turn to try and cash in on it. But it looks very meager, right? Like, this is not the hand you want when your opponent's just played Lunacy. Is this just intellect and hope for the best? I think it has, <laughs> it has to, to be. be. Yeah. Yep, not seeing a better option. <laughs> or okay. Board generation, very nice. You love to see it. And do you like spending the banner here and just chuck blessing down? Yes. I th obviously, it gets punished by um, Devolving Missiles, which is grim. Um, but if you don't do anything, your entire turn gets dealt with by potentially a two-mana combustion, right? You, it's just combustion right. printed dead center. And you see Psycho here understanding the positional concerns, <laughs> putting it on the middle one as well. Um, but it, So obviously, a lot of people will look at this and go, well, why would you do that? You just get blown out by Devolving Missiles. Well, now your opponent needs to have Devolving Missiles and Combustion to clean up your board most of the time and from this spot. And the Devolving Missiles can still miss. It does happen. And also for me, it's not as if this is a straightforward minion matchup, right? It's not often both sides of the board have minions on them. So it's not as if you can go, oh, well, wait, then I... It says explode! hey oh. Um, We'll wait, and then I'll play Bless of Authority to, like, make a good trade. It's like, well, the trades might never even be there, right? So just chuck it down, see if it lives. If not, look at the respect the Boston's had to show this. Look how much this one card has really made Boston commit, right? Yep. It does very much look like this series is paying homage to the one that we had previously, where Boston is just building up a fat handful of burn and just trying to get there against the uh, deck of Lunacy on the other side. Psycho going to rummage through his deck with the Arcane Intellect, trying his absolute best to find another way to generate a board. Doesn't hit it this time, though, which means that Boston is going to have at least one free turn here. It would potentially be Mask if it was to come out here for six mana, right? If it was discounted, that's probably what Psycho is most scared of. And it's the reality as well. It's what he's potentially going to face down. Yeah, this is looking very tough. But for me, even with this front of power, it's hard to imagine a way that Bosden, yeah, just doesn't just start going, okay, let's go. Like I said earlier in the previous match, just get the burn play. Don't sort of go towards the end game and have like four or five burn cards in hand that you can't play all in one go. Right. I like this a lot. Developed a good board as well with the run fact in the middle. Well, well positioned, of course. But still, this is a bit of an awkward board here for Psycho to try and deal with.
Yeah, passed up the extra damage in order to make a board. That does make sense, I would imagine. What to do? What to do? The only fear is that, you know, not casting Mask when it's available for the maximum 10 damage is that, you know, Psycho does have the ability to generate boards, right? And he'll do it with some regularity because he's on a full cost uh, deck of Lunacy game. So whether or not that Mask actually gets to connect through for maximum damage. Do? If you don't take it while it's available, is up in the air. But I do overall like the decision from Boston. Psycho does have a very nice combo. Oh, okay, okay. I was looking at whether he was going to hold this fiendish circle for survival of the fittest. Yeah, I have to admit, I was considering that too, but he wants to uh, preload it here. Oh, try and get them to it. stick on the board. Straight into a Reckless Apprentice. Yes, not ideal, it has to be said. I can take him. Wait. Oh. Shaking head there from Psycho, understandable. Could very easily be the difference between winning and losing this game because if those had okay. stuck, which I think he was in his rights a little bit to expect they might after having seen uh, combustion come down, various small pieces of removal be used already, and then survival of the fittest would land. But obviously, there's multiple layers of protection against that with Boston having picked up a uh, counter spell here as well to be able to just block on curve survival of the fittest. This also now, the way that he's played it, blocks on curve Nagran Slam, if that was the option from Psycho's hand at the moment. So I think right. it's very nice timing as to when he's chosen to go for the, uh, the secret disruption here. Yeah, oh, oh, oh okay. Oh. Al although this looked a little bit painful to almost knowingly throw a um, a Devolving Missiles into a counter spell, well worth it, right? Psycho needs to get something on this board. Now he has so some level of freedom in the next turn or so to maybe go stand against Darkness into Survival of the Fittest as well. But yeah, getting getting that minion from Scenario Ward is absolutely huge here. He did proc the Oasis, though. Raven, you're the WoW Lord guy. Is there a reason why, like, so many of the Baron's cards are wearing, like, fur? They have, like, fur lining. They have, they have like, fur plumage on everything. Like, is there a reason for that? Uh, which card are we talking about? Well, I noticed it on Rakara, but, like, the the more I'm seeing... Um... So it's, it's more of a... Uh, so, basically, the Baron's is the first place after the Horde Capital Ogrimmar that you go to. Right. And it's just... It's deserty, you know, like, kind of sort of a savannah style place so it's um yeah i think it's just that kind of approach and because it's hard it's very sort of like a you know a tribal style aesthetic I, I suppose i see yeah not a bad soul mirror at all here Kills off at least some of the threats and also gets him his own mana worms, but there's just no good follow up, is there, from Psycho? So I think he might well just maybe ping off one and just play Bless of Authority again. Seems likely. Yeah. The, the only mana worm. Is, oh, the yeah, biggest where mana it worm we've goes, seen for a while. Right? It's not even a question. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Like, that could just win Psycho the game next turn. Flame Strike, really nice pickup though. Yeah, Flame Strike is an answer just by default if Boston does not find anything better. So he will log that one away and probably spend the rest of the turn now looking for better alternatives. But between the Flame Strike and the buff that he will get on the Mana Worm. I was even looking at Flame Strike Fireball on the Mana Worm. Is that crazy to retain his own? Yeah, could be. I could, Mana Worm I like that, hits actually. face for three. He gets the three attack from the three two as well. He he ends up dealing six to face <laughs> due to the fireball. So hmm? I'd just be sad to see this board go, Raven. As you know, purple is my favorite color, and this is a very magenta looking board right now. Same, actually. One of the few things we have in common. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> purple, and we like Hearthstone. <laughs> the big list. Well, I mean, let's let's not state that too. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh, weird choice, right? Card generation or card draw when Boston's hand is pretty clunky and full as it is. This means he's gonna trade instead. Oh! Boston's playing with fire. Okay. Okay! Sure. Very nice. Oh, nice. The worm weaver's back. So after seeing Flame Strike, there just isn't a better turn, right? Stand there against. Is not. Yeah, it just, it just has to be the play here. Makes a huge board here for Boston to deal with after a Flame Strike's been played. What more could Psycho possibly want? Yeah, and that's why, you know, when I was talking about the start of the turn, like, Boston will log the Flame Strike and then find some better way of doing it that, that preserves the flame strike. Yeah. This is exactly why, right? But he just wasn't able to do it in the end, and the, the quote-unquote punish is going to come down. I wonder... I will crush your delusions of grandeur! All right. Miracle turn is on. Mm. I don't know quite how much it can achieve. Wants devolving, right, from this Ruined Orb? Isn't going to get it. Does having Cantus flow into the, uh, the Spring Water again to refill? Yeah, it's a little bit awkward. If he's going to get devolving, he wants to do it soon. Like, he can't just shoot bits Wait. and pieces of damage at stuff. Oh! What if he just lethals him instead? He's, he's just, just going? Right. Okay, okay. So he has 12 right now. Is the devolving missiles. This is just gonna make blood imps and wisps and murloc tiny fins. Ah, okay, didn't get there in the end. Okay, I also got confused by the animation. I thought there was a third fireball. Nope. Still though, not a bad. Oh, oh, it's oh! the trick totem all along. <laughs> Hello. So. You asked earlier, how do you build a spell mage deck to be good against other mages? Put Trick Totem in it. That's my tech. That is strictly illegal. So Psycho just has to start peeling away some of this board. He can use this piercing shot and the damage will go through. Obviously, if it, as long as it's not targeted at the face, it works. Yes. Just got to work out where he wants. He doesn't necessarily need max damage from piercing shot. He probably wants to retain max health on his minions. So I imagine I agree. it can go yeah. on the water elemental or the 3-4. The 5-2 doesn't have a good trade on board anyway, though, right? So I think just shipping that into the water elemental is fine. It's not like the 5-2 could take a value trade anywhere else to really reward Psycho for that. So that seems fine. But yeah, I do agree. Psycho wants to be preserving health more than he wants to be dealing damage right now. These Scenarium Worlds have done a, a great deal of work for him. Boston's been throwing damage, and then Psycho's just been healing up, armoring up, and then Boston's just been having to re-damage all over again. It's just like Boston's chucked so much at the face already. I think that Miracle Turn would have got there if Psycho hadn't have found these two Scenarium Wards already. I wonder. Really tricky turn here. Like, it's so expensive, but you could just go for the Ethereal Conjurer. See if you can fish out you know, a Cone of Cold, mm. just something to delay this, just maybe one more turn. Always hungry for more. Time. What once was power has become clear. He has to trade the 3 1, right? Obviously, depend on what he draws. Oh, okay. That was insane. Shooting star going to clear up the majority of the threats. Does have to trade away the mini mage, but now there's only a 5-8 on the board, but Psycho can respond with a Nagrand slam. Yeah. Best possible draw in the deck, you have to imagine. I think the 5A has to go into the 5-5, five yep. five, and then you just come on and slam and just hope that those mana worms bite the dust. That is not the target. That is not the target. Okay, there's one. So five damage on board. 
for Bosden. Fireball is 11, 12, 13. He could get outs from Evocation, but it might just have to be a Solari. Actually, with four mana Mask, can he get there somewhere? Well, with Combustion, that helps. It does. So just need spell damage for it to be efficient, though. I still don't think it's enough to get yeah, there, right? So if he combustions, wait for he can combustion ping as well and still mask fireball. Gonna go for the uh, prime. Yeah, I think I agree with this in the end. Prime time did seem like the one. <sighs> okay. Well, if this is your prime, fair enough. I mean, this could be a problem. Problem if it lands on the scenarios. Oh. It does not, okay. though. Okay. And he can just. Yeah, combustion to push the extra damage from the mana worm, which I do believe he needs with this extra armor, right? He wants to just combustion, yep. clean up all this with his spell damage from the egg win as well. Psycho's in trouble. It's game. That is game. Boston has just about got over the line. Nothing that Psycho can do with a fireball and a soul of the forest and a dream, because regardless of him clearing up the Solarian or clearing up the Aegwyn, the uh, the mask and the fireball that are in hand are going to get the job done here. And what a difference a trick toe to make subtle. That cloak, oh, utterly ridiculous, <laughs> utterly ridiculous. He would have taken what, shadows. like fifteen? He'd be dead, yeah. 100%. Yeah. 100% dead. There's no way he could have stood up to that. With Psycho just having that fireball sat in hand for multiple turns, mm. he would have been in range of that fireball almost certainly at that point. Yeah, and now Bosden with the double mask attack for a smooth 24. More than enough damage, of course. And that is going to be game number one going up to Bosden with the help of that trick totem. Psycho, rough loss for game one there, but still plenty of time to come back. In. Indeed. And yeah, I have to say, the uh, the Mage Mirrors today, they're uh, a bit more, a bit meatier than we've been seeing in uh, in previous days. We've actually been getting, been able to sink our teeth into these because it hasn't just been the uh, the absolute nuts being drawn. Or I guess in this case, like, Deck of Lunacy stretches the game on for a little yeah. bit longer than just straight up burning oh. out on one side. Or at least even, not even game length, but just in complication, right? It just adds multiple layers of complication to the game, as opposed to just saying, right, level one battle for the board, level two burn face, which is generally the plan in the, the non-lunacy games, of course. But yeah, a pretty exciting games and tough to deal with. But that was the moment it all ended there because Psycho basically just lost, what, like 18 damage that he could have had to face that turn? Yeah. Disgusting stuff, absolutely. I think actually with just piercing shot and the fireball that he had, he might have just been directly lethal that Potentially, turn. Yeah. If there wasn't a stealth. I think he might have just had it on the spot if though both of those cards were in his hand at the time, which I think they were. But anyway, the game continued and uh, it needed a little bit of help from the prime at the end. It didn't need to be a spectacular prime, just kind of good enough. And that's absolutely what it was for Boston to get himself over the line. Psycho needed to pick up something nutty off uh, one lunacy draw, was not able to find it. The potential was there, right? Like if you just pick up I don't know, Skull as your one draw off the top there, right? Test the counter spell with the Fireball and then pop off with Skull of Gul'dan. Like, all things well, were still possible for the Lunacy player there. It was also as well the Apex's Blast from Prime getting the Aegwin to add the spell yeah. damage for that insane combustion to actually clear the board was yeah. huge. But let's move on to this game number two. Encanter's flow in the hand. Lunacy going to be tossed. And uh, Refreshing Springwater going to be kept here for Bosden. So what do you make of this? Uh, what I make of this is that he philosophically differs from yeah. the other players that we've been seeing so far in Yala, <laughs> in uh, Yala and Psycho. You see the wry smile coming out for Boston as he gets it right back again because uh, we've seen Yala quite deliberately, for example, play Flow on two and then play Lunacy on four. Like when that choice was clear to him and he was doing it with full knowledge. Um, whereas Bosden saying, if he if I have flow in my opening hand, I just don't want to see the Lunacy. I'm just happy with going with the burn plan from that point mm. and mulliganing it away. And I, I love to see these player responses to encounters and not even in a jokey way, but Bosden clearly knows he needs one more game. Boom, finals more points fantastic he's like just yep. just don't have just don't have encounters this game i've got it so you don't have it he sees it from psycho he's like oh and then just casts his own so it's like well it is kind of fair for now but obviously these players don't want it to be fair in that way it's just mm -hmm. funny watching the uh, the responses and we're already at that point coin lunacy 
<coughs> or water, well, into water. But what impact does this encounter slow have, Sotil? Because it's not as straightforward as it normally is, or it, it has been so far today. Yeah, but again, we saw Yala make this exact decision before, del and deliberately so, to play Flow first and then play Lunacy when he had the choice to do so. Um, it wouldn't surprise me enormously. We've already seen that Boston kind of differs philosophically, and that makes sense, because I believe uh, Psycho and Yala have been known to practice together, to scrimmage together, so they like know each other quite well and probably agree on philosophical approaches to matchups, whereas Boston comes from a different practice group. So if he disagrees, I would not be surprised. But we're seeing now if this coin is coming out that he is going to resign himself to a lunacy game yeah looks like it okay decision made I caught at least for now as a much more never mind he also has the choice <laughs> to go for a deck of lunacy if he wants a little bit cheaper of course can still play that blood mage alongside it's kind of the one thing we've been missing so far, right, is full clown mode in all of the mage mirrors that we've seen. I don't think we've seen the straight up lunacy mirror right. just yet. So I guess if we're going to tick everything off the bingo card, this is one that we've still got to see. And again, I think Psycho's hand supports it pretty well, right? Because he has the refreshing spring water of his own and he has an extra card draw coming with the blood mage Thanos. And yeah, Boston raises his eyebrows. This is peak competitive Hearthstone, folks. I hope you guys at home have got seat belts attached to your chairs and wherever you're watching from because uh, you're going to need to buckle in for this one. Yep. Boston, like, if I Varden this Thanos, he'll need to ping it if he wants to draw an extra card. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, I love it when we reach the point where the next level Raven plays start coming out. That's what I live for. Well, remember when you said we got very good at casting long, grindy priest mirrors? So yeah. This is my skill set, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I put the work in. I got really good at priest. I wasted my entire life just playing priest on ladder. Figured out all the intricacies. Talked to a high-level priest players about how you played the mirror match. Knew all the interactions. Got ahead of the curve with knowing how Lucia worked and all that good stuff. Raven just suggested dumb plays every now and again. It was a beautiful dynamic, and everyone loved it. Balance is everything. Okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Pride Fury, not really the best pickup here for Psycho at the moment, but it does have refreshing spring water, of course. Can start with that ruined orb because he will gain the full mana back from refreshing. Yes. Like this. And then even after this, he can end with a Pexus Blast, even if he doesn't find anything, uh, anything lunacy wise to do with his turn. Which I think he might be interested in doing anyway, because it will end up corrupting his Ring Toss, which is obviously a very powerful tool to Ooh. have at your disposal. What do you make of the Primordial Studies? Because to me, I know Lunacy games play very differently, but mm -hmm. I would have just liked a second Apexis Blast. And even though both players have gone Lunacy, you're still allowed to be a high burst damage deck or an aggressor, right? I think he took Primordial Studies because he had Pride's Fury in hand, so he's looking for cheap minions to play so he can buff them up and make them huge. And he's, he's seeing that being paid off immediately here. This is one of the things that you do do more as a matter of urgency when you're playing Lunacy versus Lunacy, because there is, what, one card currently in Boston's hand that is capable of being Devolving Missiles. Oh, sorry, two cards in Boston's hand that could be Devolving Missiles, and zero cards in Boston's deck that could be Devolving Missiles. Mm. So your chances of getting Devolved this game are incredibly low. What do you chance the game brawled, Subtle? Ah, uh, uh, one in 23, Raven, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Oh, isn't Deck of Chaos just the worst? Yeah, what are you doing here? <laughs> Another brawl. Okay. <laughs> but honestly, a terrible draw for Boston right now. Just nothing to actually do. Yeah, just dump an I-Beam. Probably better than dumping in a, a Hysteria. Such a weird card that it lets you play it when it doesn't do anything. But it... Yeah, it it does feel unique in that aspect, doesn't it? Because yeah. most cards, if there isn't an actual viable target for it to achieve its goal, then it just doesn't bother. Mm -hmm. Not bad. 
Yeah, initiative, damage initiative definitely going over here to Psycho and obviously comfortably ahead on board, but with the amount of cards, the amount of mana and the amount of spell damage that Boston has available here, I think Psycho will be fearing the worst. I don't think he's expecting his advantage to last much longer here. And again, we do see that sort of nod to the way Lunacy plays out in that Psycho just keeping petting Zoo. Because one, he has a ring toss, but also he can draw more buff cards, right? Like the yes. AoE board buff. So why yes. dump it out as a 3-3 three, three now when it could be a full board in the near future? Yeah, when that can be just a 9-9 nine, nine with ring toss. And then even then, if he can just get, you know, plus one, plus one or survival of the fittest or anything else to come down on that later. Absolutely the case. Time runs out on me. Yep. Boston just on a mission to dump as many cards as possible so he can go on a pilgrimage through his deck. Go follow this up with ping just to kill off the full one. Doesn't look like there's anything else that stands out too much here. Oh, did go for hysteria as well. Okay. I guess it's worthwhile, right? He assumes the Phoenix will die anyway. And there's a chance where the Phoenix lives with the correct first trade from Mysteria. Mm hmm. First pick was snap picked. It was rigged fair game as well. Okay, I was going to ask that question. Again, this is a flow first, lunacy second um, game. So the threat of like Nagrand Slam does not exist, for example. So it's actually quite hard for Deck of Lunacy to deal damage from an empty board. Um, and when your cards are as efficient as Deck of Lunacy cards are, if you can force your opponent to spend two mana a turn on pinging, you are massively limiting what they are able to do in terms of uh, peak power levels. So I think Rig Fair Game is a, a very, very good choice here. Yep, second one was Netherwind Portal as well, the uh, generally expected secret to be chosen too. That's right. What about zero mana Feral Rage to the face, Sotl? I'll stop you, uh, you Rig Fair Game. <laughs> I think he'll gain eight. I'm pretty sure he'll gain eight. Yeah. I'm okay. Saying it would have worked. Just, no, I know. I'm just I'm kind of curious as to whether that was actually the card that you wanted to test Counterspell with. Because that was obviously the purpose, right? He was throwing that card out. It cost zero. That was what he was willing to just kind of give up to the Counterspell. But I think it's a very interesting choice as to whether that was the worst card in his hand over, like, Potion and, of Illusion. Yeah. And uh, strangely, a good Netherwind Portal for Bosden. Because now he could whoa, actually, whoa, 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 could whoa, actually whoa, just whoa, hysteria. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, I guess you can still do it after the fact, right? He can still go Blessing of Kings, Siphon Soul on whatever yeah. lives. To draw two cards. Draw two more cards, yeah. Oh. You want do you want to do that? I feel like you want to do that. Am I crazy? Well, I could answer that one question two different ways. <laughs> Fair. And both with a yes. So I guess he is going to allocate that two mana just to denying the rigged fair game on the other side, which in his defense does mean that he has far less mana available for actually doing silly things like burning cards just so that he can draw more. So I guess that does actually make sense in the end. On mana tidal search, going to be pretty clean. Although he could just go for brain freeze ping to again just get more out of the tidal surge instead. Hmm. Gonna hold on to the brain freeze. Also, brain freeze, although less damage, also has the benefit of freezing. So, if there's a big minion coming out from Boston, say a Librum of Hope, for example, then he has the ability to freeze it if required. <laughs> Enjoyed the way he said that. A uh, Librum of Hope, for <laughs> example. Can I interest you in a Librum of Hope? So. Yep. Roll number. Is that brawl number three. two or three? I think That's three, three, right? Three. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. That's pretty much the dream right now. Let's draw three cards for zero mana. Seems powerful. Is it weird that watching Lunacy Mage, as in Mage that has played Lunacy, just feels like watching Token Druid? Yeah, I mean, 
that's weird. If you isn't forgive, it? if you forgive the overused imagery, it is the proverbial wet noodle fight, right? When you go, <laughs> when you go flow first, there's so few threats in your deck from that point, just because of the way the mana break points break down. Um, exactly, you are looking for these like five cost slots where they end up to be your token generation with like stand against darkness, force of nature, runic carvings, all that kind of stuff. But when you just cut like one to two Nagran slams out of your deck, it's so hard to know like when where the finishes are. Mm. So it doesn't feel like Librum of Hope ends the game in a Mage Mirror, right? It might end the game against like Weapon Rogue or you know Agro Paladin or whatever, but it just doesn't feel like you're going to wall out a uh, mage on the other side by by playing six mana eight eights. It just doesn't feel powerful enough, weirdly, against some of the things that it is possible to do. Yeah, this does feel pretty powerful though. Invigorating Sermon is going to buff this whole board up to 2-2. Two, two. It doesn't look like much, but again, like this damage has to come in from somewhere. The board has to be built somehow that isn't as ignorable as, as we can see, just a one big minion on board. Can you do some kind of Varden Potion play here? I like it, yeah. It looks very strong. I'm gonna blow it all up. Prioritizing this over just freezing for multiple turns, just to play around the potential of any big buffs or any nonsense right. that's coming down. Just using the uh, the double effect from Varden to uh, to deal four to the frozen minions the second time around. Psycho mousing over uh, a quality cycle of hatred combo, which is yep, very real. Those those uh, cards play together quite nicely. Yeah, and I was just going to say, I wouldn't mind this Ancient Guardian coming down now, even though it looks a little bit uh, weenie. Um, the Divine Shield is a big deal because he has Blessing of Kings in hand, right? So he can yes. Blessing of Kings it next turn, push some damage to face, have another threat on the board. Things I learned, Raven, the name of that card. Hmm. <laughs> Librum of Hope, dude. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I wonder. Of course, the quality Still. ping cycle looks fantastic here. Yeah, exactly. Still has the play with the quality cycle of hatred. Can just ping the undamaged ancient guardian and go a quality cycle. Still get the full board swing. What to do? What it's just if he pings, he doesn't get to play Librum of Hope himself. Like he might just decide, you know what? Have your one one. I want my own eight eight on my side of the board. And I think that is probably stronger at this point. Okay, I agree. That's true. That. That's true. I was actually wondering whether he's actually going to just play the Standing Against Darkness as well. It might be a bit too much committing to the board. Yep. But he does just go for the 8 eight. Now, game's all nice and fair. Both players have a terrible card in hand in the form of Deck of Chaos. Psycho rolls his head back. Knows that that's, you know, technically a punish, but it's not like Hysteria is a card you can play around. It's not like anything is a card that you can play around. There's a few things where you can put your opponent in ranges of cards that they might have, but specifically Hysteria, for example, is just not something that you play around, and that was a very specifically Hysteria kind of board that uh, Psycho generated, so no great fault. We're starting now to enter the fatigue situation where actually Psycho can get punished for that rigged fair game that he's uh, put in play several turns ago. We're almost at the point where Boston can just willingly choose not to damage him to draw those extra cards and accelerate him ahead in fatigue. Oh, that is true. That is a very good spot. And it's not as if Boston would be sacrificing a lot to do so, right? He has a liberal of hope to, for the defensive play. He could just siphon this 8-8 eight, eight away. He does miss 8 damage this turn if he chooses to do that, if he wants to wait. But, but he doesn't have you to do You started your sentence turn. with, he doesn't have to give up that much. And then you're like, well, he does have to not attack with an 8-8. Eight, eight. I feel like those two statements are fairly contradictory, Raven. Well, for, no, well, for example, he could just use the 8-8 eight, eight to trade and retain the siphon, yeah, depending True. on what he's thinking about, right? It's just there are options to go for here. 
Yeah, yeah, but I think more importantly, right, I'm I'm raising that issue a couple of turns early just so we're aware of it. There's no reason why Boston has to do it now. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, can wait, he can wait two turns, three turns, four turns even, and just, you know, wait for that rig fair game to go off whenever he wants it to. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Pretty much. What to do? What to do? What this game has done has made me firm in my belief that I will not be playing Lunacy Mage and just play the uh, the burn version. <laughs> <laughs> I do not want to. Hasn't play this looked matchup. powerful, has it? No, but but the, this is the problem, right? You can argue it's powerful when you do it and they don't. If you don't do it, then you can't get to that point. But if you do it and your opponent does it, it becomes dumb, right? So it's, it's a very difficult one to say, oh, you shouldn't play Lunacy because of this. Well, what if they don't draw it? Then you might just win if that's, you know, if this is what the players decided is good enough. It's a really tough one. Yeah, it's just been a very unspectacular game of, of Lunacy versus Lunacy, I think. And it's because both players went um, Encanter's Flow yeah. first, which obviously dramatically changes the pool of cards, sorry, the pool of cards that you're uh, you're dealing with, Raven. Hey, you sound like a scouse the other day. I didn't even say anything. <laughs> could be worse. Could be, uh, could be Bromagem. <laughs> that was a stretch. It's actually not. I googled what it meant. That's perfect <laughs> usage. <laughs> I even naturally set you up for these things. I'm just too good at my job. I'm sure everyone will agree. So if trying to come down on one of these wolves also has another Librum of Hope for Boston. He's probably going to use it to heal his own minion though. Or is he not going to commit to it? Says this is enough for now. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, this does look well, meager, doesn't it? It does. I think Psycho's goose might be cooked here. I'm almost out of cards. Oh, and the Librum of Hopes just keep on flying. I thought that was Boston's last one in hand, but obviously I've lost count here. I think the two players might have lost count as well at this point. It gets very difficult to have any f form of real tracking because you're both playing similar-ish cards almost every turn. It gets difficult to yeah. even keep track. Like It is very difficult. It's something that I do like kind of pride myself on as one of my strong points as a player is that like my tracking is very good. Like I did it all manually in Priest Mirrors last season going back to that um, before we had deck trackers available to us. Um, but even I just lose track enormously. Like, theoretically, you can at least, like, have some idea of what mana cost the cards they have remaining are if you're keeping track perfectly, mm -hmm. but it's so difficult to do when all the discounts come in and keep going back and forwards. Yeah, and I think this is a checkmate here from Boston because if Psycho kills the 8-1, Boston just passes. If Psycho doesn't kill the 8-1, Boston wins. <laughs> That's what is known in the business as a checkmate, Raven. Yeah, that ain't it. That is going to be the game. That is going to be the series. And Nod, a bit of a fist pump there from Boston. As honestly, he, he, he needs this, right? Boston, on, we, we talk a lot about the likes of Yala, Bunny Hopper, Blyze. Boston just although has been in Grandmasters for a long time now, hasn't really had that big season, right? It's not been like, wow, Boston's, you know, going nuts right now. He's sitting first place all season, doing yeah. well in playoffs and so on. He's just not had it, right? And I think he needs a, a win or at least a good place in here, which now he will have, getting top two. And yep. it's going to do, one, a lot for his confidence, but two, a lot for him on that leaderboard. Because as we talk about a lot, Yes, relegation, you don't want to be relegated, but you want to actually be sitting at the top of those standings. You don't just want to be sitting in the middle every single season, right? Because that's not what these players are really competing for. Yeah, and I do remember way back um, when Boston kind of, in, I guess, in the inaugural season of Grandmasters, when I was talking to Boston and asked 